Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, March 26th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to kick things off with our market technicals dashboard here. You can see that we were green right across the board today in all of the major indices, led higher by the Russell 2000, up almost 1% here on Tuesday. Notice though, we do have a five-day change that is still negative across the board, and we're still mostly below the 10 simple period moving average in most of the major indices. So we're getting a little bit of a bounce back here on Tuesday, but still over the past week or so, uh, we're still in a little bit of uh, uncertain choppy waters. When we look at some of the sector analysis, you can see there's still that negative tilt to the downside, negative skew to the downside. Financial still at the bottom of the pack here, as well as biotech and transports. And on the upside, we have that defensive tone with utilities and staples leading uh, to the positive for the past five trading sessions. When we look at some of the major markets, we got VIX, which is still out and to the right here, 12% pop over the past five days, as well as TLT and the 10-year uh, bonds as well. So long end of the curve, uh, really just bonds across the board are rising. And then on the downside, we have natural gas, China and emerging markets. So let's jump into the charts here of the S&P 500. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, this is the cash market. And we can see that we are up 0.31% as of the close here Tuesday. There's still plenty of time left in the trading week. But this is important because if you recall last Friday when we had our last market video update and we also had kind of the turnaround in the market, we had a lot of chatter, a lot of a lot of uh, kind of uh, news out there and sentiment really leaning on the sort of reversal day that we saw, the drop we saw in the market on Friday. And the general tone or, or sort of thoughts that we had on Friday was, uh, you know, this could absolutely be the turning point. It has the hallmarks of what one looks like. Uh, but importantly, we would need follow through to that move. We would need the confirmation. We'd need to see more than just a single day event because the market has been good at doing these little quick shakeouts throughout the course of this year. But notice we're very, um, you know, we're very strongly skewed to the upside over the course of this year. I mean, the S&P 500 is up almost 20 percent off of the lows. I know it's not quite the um, year to date numbers, but the point is, is we still have this very strong uptrend that has been in place for the past multiple weeks. And every time we get these one or two day moves to the downside, um, we get a lot of chatter thinking, oh, okay, here comes the rollover for this market. And eventually it will be the case that will be correct. Um, but follow through is always important. And, um, as of right now, we do not have follow through to the downside. We've got a little pop higher. We're back above 2,800. We still have a MACD that is trying to push higher here. So it is still making higher highs on um, or in the, in, the, in the very near term. Uh, it is still grinding higher here, the MACD on the weekly time frame. And we just basically are, are back into this range that we've now been in for the past five trading weeks. So we have the context of this intermediate term uptrend, and we have now five weeks of essentially moving sideways, bouncing up and, you know, plus or minus 2,800, but we're trying to hold above it right now. So if we go down to the daily chart and we look at the levels a little bit closer here, you can see Monday session was basically a muted session. We did attempt early in the day to, to kind of find some follow through to the downside, but it was mostly muted and we closed basically back up where we opened and uh, flat on the session pretty much across the board. And then today, of course, we had that pop up and the pop up failed. So by no means is this a, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a victory lap for the bull. Uh, I don't think that uh, they, they deserve that at this point, uh, but there's certainly no cheering for bears right now either. It's really a standstill. It's a choppy market, and this is where you need to be careful not to get too chopped up and not to chase moves too quickly uh, because we are getting just that sideways kind of indecisive grind right now, and the market doesn't have to go just straight up or down. It's not always a directional up or down. Uh, it, can it can, you know, most of the time, in fact, going sideways and doing nothing. Um, and I think that's where we sort of find ourselves right now. So 2,800, that's still a, a level, a reference point, uh, a near-term gauge of sort of sentiment and where we are 
if we start losing it, if we start following through below Monday's lows, if we start getting follow through to last week's reversal, then of course I will be defensive. And of course, I think the market is in a, um, you know, in a vulnerable state in the short term, if we start to roll over here and start to make new lows on the week. But if we hold up here, if we stay above 2800, and if we can chop around these levels, then I really think it's, it's you know, just a time where we may want to just deploy some patience and not necessarily push buttons in and try and anticipate too quickly where the market um, you know might go so 2800 that's what I'm looking at 2872 and really it was last Thursday's highs that's the reference point on the upside and then if we start to roll over here it's going to be last Friday's low I'm sorry two Fridays ago is March 8th the lows there around 2722 that would be the next kind of pivot low reference point that I would pay attention to if this market does in fact start to roll over and take a nosedive below 2800 if we go to the IWM here this is where you know, maybe a little bit of encouragement came early yesterday because on Monday, notice that the IWM was in fact up, I think the most. And again, this is very kind of minor, you know, minor uh, points or percentages that we're talking about, but it did get a more meaningful positive close yesterday. And we in fact got more follow through today. So it's up 1%. So in fact, if we look at the, the uh, IWM on the weekly chart, it's up one and a half percent and it is above last week's lows and it has reclaimed the pivot from March 8th here uh, on, on you know, back to the upside. So if we're looking at the IWM as the leader, there's some subtle clues here. They're very short term, uh, but there's some subtle clues here that the IWM has uh, found some buyers to step in here and we got a slight follow through day here on Tuesday. Last but not least, if we go to the Qs, you can see here is uh, on the week up 0.27%. It is trying to hold up above uh, back in and recovering some of the damage here, some of the pullback from Friday. And again, when we look at this just on a zoomed out basis here, it's still very much holding trend and um, you know, uh, holding a positive MACD here if we look at the top end of this chart. So all in all, no follow through yet. That could change. The week is not over. Uh, we're back above 2800. The IWM is st starting to lead the pop here. And again, it doesn't mean we have to go straight up. Doesn't mean we have to go straight down. I think chop here is, uh, you know, a totally reasonable situation as uh, the market sort of grapples with these levels. So that is the overall take there on the market environment. Let's go to some of the other major markets here. We'll go to TLT, which basically bonds across the board have been, you know, ripping nicely to the upside. Yields have been falling. Falling and uh, TLT, no exception. You can see on the week here uh, is up slightly. Had more of a lead yesterday uh, on Monday, but we did get a, a pullback off of those highs. We talked about the position that we put on here in TLT, not in TLT directly, but in TMF, which is the 3x bull to the you know leverage ETF to the TLT. Uh, put that on after uh, Wednesday's breakout session here. We did scale profits. Uh, luckily towards the highs here on Monday session. So we're still holding a position in uh, TLT effectively in TMF. Uh, but we have taken some profits, raised up stops, still holding the bulk of our position, looking for follow through here. But I generally speaking like this breakout in TLT. This was a meaningful multi-year level around this 122 area, 123 area. We broke out. We did it on volume, did it with some expansion in range. MACD is leading higher. Kind of all the things you like to see in a breakout. Uh, doesn't mean we can't pull back, retest, and slog sideways here and kind of work off some stretched conditions. Uh, but Generally speaking, as long as we're above 123, uh, I like TLT right now in the short to intermediate term. And we do have a position that uh, suggests that. If we go to oil next, USO here, nice move today, 1.8% higher here on Tuesday. It's up almost 2% on the week. And you can see this trend here, short to intermediate term is continuing higher. It hasn't been a rip roaring trend. It's been mostly a grind, kind of two steps forward, one step back, but it is getting the job done. Bulls are hanging on here. MACDs in positive territory and we are working higher in oil. Natural gas not so lucky kind of going the other way. It's stagnated sideways here for a few weeks and now it's starting to lose this 2450 level closing at new um, kind of uh, near term lows today down 1% on the week. Again 2450 or so that's been more or less my line in the sand uh, for natural gas. It's 
starting to inch back below it. Uh, so it's kind of in the penalty box for me until and if it can reclaim 2450 on the upside. Last but not least, if we look at metals here, GLD on the week is higher, 0.27%. And this one is continuing to grind higher here. It made that low around 121 after breaking this trend here. Bulls are trying to continue this up putting that higher low uh, and the grind higher is basically still working. It's tough to chase. There's not a lot of authority. Again, it's two steps forward, one step back kind of grind, uh, but um, bulls are uh, getting it done right now on the upside and silver, pretty much the same thing. A little bit weaker this week. It's, it's just barely in flat territory. You can see it's more kind of stagnating and moving sideways here. So looking a little bit more vulnerable, looking like it wants to maybe kind of curl over here and maybe roll over. I will have to see if that actually happens. Bulls are still kind of hanging on right now and trying to inch this higher, but uh, keep an eye on it. Looks looks a little bit weak here, at least relative uh, to GLD. So that is it. That is what I have for the midweek video. Um, thanks so much as always for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel or you can follow us on thetraderisk.com. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video update.